Welcome to my tutorial on how I made this toolbox using the Swirl It Use June Technique Kit. It's pretty long because it's pretty in depth, but I hope you enjoy it. First thing you want to do is you're going to want to put the whole thing together and then you're going to want to go ahead and paint your sides. I used gesso for mine. So after applying the gesso, I went ahead and applied a layer of the Silks Glazes and Ice to the edge with the gesso. And I went ahead and I've already done some of the other pieces. I just wanted to show you a little bit of how I cover this with paper. I like to use Mod Podge because for me it's tried and true. I know how to use it. I use it well. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the Mod Podge. Make sure that when you're doing this, a couple tidbits, don't cover your tabs because these need to fit into the slots of the piece here on the end. And if you cover them with paper, they, they won't fit. The other thing, remember I told you this thing is going to swell. And so you want to try to keep the Mod Podge off the tabs as much as you can because you don't want the tabs themselves to swell. So first what I do is I get this lined up. And the way I like to do this is I line it up to the corners without the tab. And once I've got it lined up and I've got it seated where I want it, I go ahead and I pull back and I just apply some Mod Podge. Remember, don't go crazy. Kind of thin, a little dabble do ya. Make sure you get the edge really, really well and don't go too far out to that tab. Once you smooth it down, take your bone folder and you're going to burnish it. You just want to seat the corner in first. So that it holds your paper down. Now you can go ahead and you can finish applying it. We're going to apply it in a vertical line from top to bottom. If you try applying Mod Podge to the entire piece and then sticking it on, you're going to have some areas where the Mod Podge has dried and it's not sticking and you'll get bubbles. And we don't want bubbles. So now I've got my entire edge glued down in a line. So I'm going to peel my paper back. Here I'll do this. Let me turn this around. <clears throat> I'm actually not left handed so um, this will be like an acrobatic act for me. And you pull back just to where you can see the moisture from the Mod Podge and you make a new line. Make sure that you get real close to your edges. Again, you don't need it super gooey thick. Kind of spread that out. And I look really awkward because I'm left-handed for the camera, but um, I really look so much more fabulous doing this with my other hand. Seriously, y'all. All right. Put it down and burnish. Get those edges really, really good. Go ahead and continue on for the entire rest of the piece. Now that the piece is all attached, we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim using our X-Acto knife and a cutting mat. We're going to just trim around the edges here. Make sure that you have a paper towel handy. 
and just wipe away any excess Mod Podge that has seeped through. Shouldn't have a whole lot because we didn't want it really super gooey. Okay, and then what I do is I just cut to the tab and then I just take my ruler and I line it up with the edge that I've already cut down here near the bottom. Should just about line up with the edge at the top. And just go ahead and lightly slice so that you don't cut into the wood piece. And that'll give you your tab. Now you can see the one that I, this piece I just put on, I didn't line it up quite nice at the top. And I'm not real ecstatic about that, but I'll just have to live with it. But I did do a really good job on the first piece. Look, Mom. Um, so what you want to do now, make sure that when you put your first piece on that you cut your hole out. So now we have a window to cut the other hole out. If you put both your pieces on, you're not going to know where your hole is. Okay? So make sure that you cut your first hole out first. And then on the inside here, just take your X-Acto knife. Run it as close to the edge as you can. It is rounded, so it is a little bit difficult. You slice up the paper, that's okay. Kind of got my wood a little bit. That is not okay. Really not okay. Now it's looking a little rough. So what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to take some very, very lightweight sanding paper. I can't find my little piece that I had, so I'll just use my big piece and tear a piece off. And you want to use something light. You don't want anything heavy duty like this. Um, even this is a little bit heavy. This Just get it any hardware store. Anywhere that, where they have sanding supplies, it's just a light, lightweight sandpaper. And you're going to want to leave it leaning towards the paper. You don't want to sand the part that you've already painted. You're wanting to sand the edge of that paper. And you're just getting it smooth and level with the, the cardboard. This piece is already sealed. You can see the glossy finish to it because I've already, I'm have already i using glossy Mod Podge and I've already put the Mod Podge on it. Since this is my piece, my bottom piece, I figure um, I'm giving this to the twins teacher um, as a gift at the end of the year. So I figured as she's tossing stuff in here, this is sealed and the paper is not going to get snagged or torn or ripped. It, it creates a, a barrier. And I'm actually going to be doing this with all of my all of my pieces once they are completed. Pieces. We're going to do one of these pieces together. Now you can see I've already cut the holes out because this is going to be my inside. What you want to remember is your side pieces are going to fit into here. And you don't want that showing. So for the inside, go ahead and layer your piece. We're going to we're going to go ahead and do this one together. Layer your piece on, cut all your pieces out, and then when you do the outside, we're just going to layer the paper over it and leave it solid. Here I'm just using sandpaper. This doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be on the inside. And now I'm doing the back side of the end. This is the piece that we're not going to cut the holes out and it's going to remain solid.
Here I'm sealing the piece with Mod Podge. Here I decided that I wanted to add some color to my doilies, so I used the dilution sprays in, I think it was grass and calypso teal. And then I used stays on ink to stamp because I was planning on doing lots of layers. And then I used the whitewash color to spray over top of it to kind of tone the colors down. I used Mod Podge to adhere the doily to the side of the box on the end piece. And here I'm just using some gesso to kind of tone the colors down since they were so bright. Also when you're doing multimedia, you want lots and lots of layers. And so as many different things layered on top of one another, stamps, medium, that's what you're gonna want. And once the gesso dried, I applied a layer of Mod Podge. That's the car heavy carvable modeling paste. Once the Mod Podge dried, I used the modeling paste to add a mask. And this is another mask that we got in a Swirly Do's kit a couple months ago. It's one of my absolute favorite masks. Here I'm using blue and white gelatos. This is a technique that I actually got from Miranda Edney. Uh, you use the shimmer sprays to blend the gelatos together and kind of muddy them up and it just created a really cool effect. <clears throat> I'm taking these hinge pieces after coloring them and just running them through a corrugator. And here I am applying the gelatos again to the other stenciling that I had done on the large pieces. Just the shimmer sprays over to the gelatos to get them to blend. And they just, it has this really cool kind of metallic effect. Now I'm using the Mod Podge to adhere some tissue tape because uh, it doesn't like to stick too well on its own. And you can also add a layer of Mod Podge right over top of it to help adhere it down. And I'm doing the same thing on the bottom. Of course, you can see on the, the bottom piece here that I've done some masking there as well. Now I'm just adhering tissue tape over it. I applied some blue gelatos, as you can kind of see there, over the tissue tape. And now I'm making a greenish color because I didn't quite have the right green um, between the mist and the blue gelatos and the white. And then to kind of tone it down, I, I just use the towel. Now for this wood piece, I'm covering the whole thing in burnished brass, distress stain and then using the smooch ink to highlight. I just did the tops and bottoms, um, kind of like it's fading down into the gold that's in the middle or the, br the brass color in the middle. Now I'm adhering a piece of lace using the Mod Podge. It actually acts as a really wonderful adhesive for fabric pieces. And those hinge pieces, they actually came in the tech kit. Um, I'm going to show a technique video on how I altered those pieces um, because the, it just would have taken too long in this video. 
And now you can see I'm just adding some pearls and other embellishments. Here, um, I kind of was off frame, so I removed the part that you couldn't see, but I'm adding just, just some lace I got at an antique store here. I just cut up some pieces of lace and just um, using the Mod Podge underneath and on top to kind of seal it in. Now that my pieces are all decorated with most of the layers for the for the bases, I'm doing um, I'm adhering my pieces together. I just put some glue. You can see I put the Mod Podge right on the edge because as you push those pieces in, it's going to push that glue back along, and you don't want glue squeezing out. And once it's all fit together, then you're going to want to go ahead and put your 3D embellishments on. I just used um, most of the stuff from my stash since all the hardware that came with this tech kit was already used. And you can see there I'm applying some more hardware, some more pieces that I had altered. And of course, I'm adding the pearls to the same spot that I did for all the rest of my hardware, just to give some continuity to the piece. I use the Calypso teal to color the butterfly and it ended up turning a really, really dark teal color, very similar to the dark flower that was on the other side, the large dark teal flower. I used hot glue to adhere all these pieces because they tend to hold better. As long as you use a high temperature hot glue, it gets the glue melty enough to really kind of grab onto those things. Also, the nice thing about hot glue is if you put a big enough bead on it, um, you can actually have something like that butterfly. When I adhered it, it's kind of sticking up. It's in a giant puddle of hot glue that's holding it upright and um, in a three-dimensional position. Mm. 